morning. My name is Brian Henderson. I'm uh, the hearing officer for this morning's administrative hearings. Uh, these hearings are being held to consider the following items which will be heard in this order. So we have citation number 213690432136970. 213-687-5-1-6, which is actually not a citation, but a warning. Uh, 213-66526, 213-66415, 213-66416, 2137881 and 2136781 so these hearings are being recorded and there's a sign up sign in sheet uh, you know if you guys uh, sign in it's either up in the front or being passed around uh, so if you sign in uh, we'll be able to contact you for the item you're here for um, well we'll the, the hearing will proceed as follows I'll go ahead and uh, call up uh, public works I'll read I'll read the citation uh, and those who intend to speak, I'll go ahead and swear them in, and then I'll have Public Works present their testimony, and then I'll call the appellant up to, uh, to present their, their rebuttal. Uh, so as I call you up, please clearly state your name into the microphone before you present your testimony, and uh, Nathan will swear you in. All right, so our first hearing, citation number 213-69043, an appeal for violation of the Municipal Police Code, section 63A, at 2450 Bryant Street. And we'll start with uh, Public Works. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Please state your name for the record. Enos Harris. Morning, Enos. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to the testimony you're about to give today is the truth to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Thank you. On Monday, November 5th, 2018, while investigating a service request complaint, do you mean, okay, there we go, this is better. On Monday, November 5th, 2018, while investigating a service request complaint for illegal dumping, I discovered furniture and boxes on the sidewalk in front of 2450 Bryant Street. I also found a single box addressed to 2450 Bryant Street amongst the items dumped. The original complaint was received on November 2nd, 2018. <clears throat> Excuse me. As a nuisance was allowed to be on the sidewalk three days, I issued a citation for violating Ordinance 63A. And then I do have some some photos of the scene that I found on the 5th when I arrived. Um, so these are it. It's the one box I found addressed to apartment A. The other box is in front of the building, a bed frame against um, the tree in front of the building. Um, some other furniture pieces more towards the um, the curb side and stuff. And that's all I have. Okay. I'd like to call up the appellant. Good morning, Mr. Henderson. My name is Bartholomew Murphy. I'm the owner of the building 2450 Bryant Street. Thank you. Good morning, sir. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give today is the truth to the best of your knowledge? I do. Thank you. <coughs> okay, what do we got? Uh, very good, sir. <coughs> uh, two points. Number one, I think procedurally, the citation uh, is, is flawed in that it was not issued to the owner of the building. Um, it was issued to, to a dead man, and I can... Um, if you note the, uh, it is um, issued to Dennis T. Murphy. So hand in a, 
please come up. It does. This is a copy of a death certificate dating back to uh, 2001, uh, when uh, Dennis T. Murphy passed away in Ireland. Um, number two, it was not served um, on the owner of the building. You'll see the proof of service is incomplete and incorrect. Um, the uh, building is owned by myself and my wife, Bartholomew Murphy and Eileen Moore, through our trust, the Murphy Moore Family Trust. Here's a copy of the tax bill, the current tax bill, which is a public record um, that shows the ownership of the building. It's been that way for many, many years. Um, the ownership was not, was neither cited in the violation nor given notice of the violation. If you take a look at the proof of service of the, uh, on the violation, it, 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 it notes that. And the proof of service is incomplete. So that's the procedural issue. The, uh, more, more importantly, I, I think the violation is, is, is fails uh, on that account. Uh, but more importantly, uh, as, as a matter of principle, um, you, you'll note from the um, investigating officer's own testimony uh, and evidence put before you, the, the uh, stuff in front of the building has the name of a tenant in the building right on it. And uh, there's no testimony given you today that the investigator, in carrying out her investigation in order to make a determination, uh, walked over to the gate of the building and pushed the tenant's doorbell. The address of the tenant is clearly on the label. Uh, I contacted the tenant. The tenant admitted that they, uh, they put all that stuff out there because they thought the city collects that type of thing. Um, so there's no testimony that, that uh, they actually investigated who the violator was in this case. Just simply took photographs, went back to the office, and sent a notice out to what they thought was the fat cat owner of the building. Um, uh, and uh, I think that's wrong. I pay $10,000 a year or more on property tax in this building. I pay $10,000 a year to Sunset Scavenger to collect the garbage. We, keep, we run a very clean building. Uh, we keep the, the sidewalks swept. We had no notice of this, uh, we, of this being there uh, by the hearing officers or by the investigator's own testimony. This complaint came in on a Friday evening. The, uh, she went out there then on Monday. So the three days that this alleged nuisance occurred was on a weekend. Uh, we had no notice of it. Uh, if the investigating officer had picked up the office, picked up the phone and phoned my office upon receipt of this, we would have cleaned it up even though we didn't cause it. And that's our practice. So uh, on those two grounds, um, one procedurally, and two on the basis that uh, this was an improper issuance of a violation to the owner of the building when the owner of the building had done nothing wrong, uh, and when there was clear evidence visible to everybody on who the violator was, and no steps were taken to, to investigate on that line, I think this violation fails and should be dismissed. Thank you. All right, I'd actually like to call the representative from Public Works out uh, to comment on the procedural issues. Might I hand these in then to make these a part of the record, please? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, come on, you can. So um, the citation was issued for allowing the nuisances to stay, not for the illegal dumping, one. And then secondly, Public Works doesn't make it a practice of knocking on residential doors. So under no circumstance would I have walked into the building or buzzed the person to come down. Again, this stuff was out from Friday to Monday, and I believe I was there Monday. <clears throat> I'm trying to see if there's a time on here. Monday at um, 3.50, no, 11.5, yeah, at 3.53. So 
almost four o'clock, these things were allowed to stay. So um, that's why the, or that was the reason that I chose to make it 63A versus illegal dumping. All right, anything else? No. Any, any further questions or concerns? I, I think I've made my, my, my points clear if you have any questions of me. Yeah. Okay, no, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'll uh, take the facts of the case under consideration and mail out my decision. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, next citation number 213-68758, an appeal for violation of the Public Works Code section 170A at 2118 22nd Avenue. And start by stating your name. Uh, my name is Natalie Chen. Can you speak into the mic, please? My name is Natalie Chen. Morning, please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give today is the truth to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Thank you. Go ahead. On Saturday, November 3rd, 2018, at approximately 10.04 a.m., I will inspect 2118 22nd Avenue to see the improper put out and storage of refuse receptacles identified and warned of during prior inspection have been resolved and found refuse receptacles out in plain sight in front of the property. I then confirmed with Recology refuse collection surface at 2118 22nd Avenue is in the name of Yan Chi Wong with a 16 gallon trash bin, a 32 gallon compost bin, and a 64 gallon recycle bin all surfaced on Tuesday. Therefore, the receptacles should only be put should only be set out for collection after 6 p.m. Monday, and must be brought in and stored out of view from the public right of way by 6 p.m. Tuesday. Previously, on Thursday, August 23, 2018, in response to a service request, I inspect 2118 22nd Avenue and issued a warning letter concerning proper put out and storage of refuse receptacles to Yan Ji Wong after finding refuse receptacle out in plain sight in front of the property. Thereafter, on Saturday, September 22nd, 2018, I issued a notice of violation to Yan Ji Wong for violating Public Works Code 170A after finding refuse receptacles out in plain sight on a long collection day. Given the problematic history with proper refuse receptacle put out and storage at this property, and because of the rest receptacles are once again out in plain view in front of the property on a long collection day, I issued a citation for violating Public Works Code 170A. So here's the image I took on uh, November 3rd. And uh, here you see the receptacles is in front of the property plain sight. And um, here's some image I took on October, on September 22nd. So um, same property. 
um, same location for the storage of garbage bins. And here's uh, some image um, captured on October 23rd. And um, same thing, same location of the bins and same property. Okay, I'd like to uh, call the appellant up. Okay, go ahead and come on up. Uh, if we can start by stating your name in the microphone there. Uh, yeah, hi. Um, my name is Kun Wei Wu. Um, Jerome is my husband. Uh, hey. He's the owner of the building. Hi, good morning, ma'am. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give today is the truth to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Thank you. Um, actually, this is the only letter we received. We never received the, um, the two letters before. Um, I think um, usually we put it back, the bin, um, inside a building, but... Uh, because I think that October, oh no, August, September, we do some remodeling inside the house. And then November, just like, because um, the washer machine is, has some problem, the, the water back up. So it's like just the inside garage is the messy around that days. So we have to put the bin outside of the building then we put it back. So uh, that's what I just say. All right. Uh, yeah, it sounds like we, yeah, you know, I mean, I, yeah, I would imagine Public Works, if you were out there working and, you know, and they saw the bins there, they'd probably talk to you directly and you could explain but to them. But we never but received the two letters before. And she said, is your world supposed to have another two letters? If I received the first letter in August, Right, so Maybe. August, yeah, August 21st, yeah. September 22nd, and then November, November 3rd. We didn't receive any letter before November. You never, you didn't receive the NOV on September 22nd? No. Was, is that a certified mailing? Yeah. Just, did you, all right, so, so there were two, you know, two warnings that she didn't get, or a, a, a warning and an NOV? Said, come, go, go ahead and come on up to the mic. It's, let me just I'm trying to understand. Um, so basically, we send all three to the same address. And the citation one, we usually send with like a certified mail. Uh -huh. uh, but the, uh, we, um, the warning and the NOV, we send it like in regular mail. I see. Uh, but we send, send it to the same address and same um, uh, uh, recipient. Okay. All right. Well, anyways, at this stage, yeah, you've you've put a lot of effort into this simple issue. I uh, hopefully you've learned the lesson, and we don't see you again here, right? Yeah, but because uh, this is the first time, I think you can just yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so for me, it's the first time I received this letter. Yeah. I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well. There you go. Yeah, I'll, I'll take the facts uh, under consideration and mail out my decision. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, our next citation, the next item is citation number 213-68820, an appeal for violation of the Municipal Health Code Section 280 at 1621 Polk Street. Is that, that's you? Okay, so I'll have Public Works present their testimony, and then I'll, and then I'll call you up, uh, we'll swear you in, and, uh, and you can present your testimony. Good morning, Lisa, state morning. your name. Nancy Wong, Public Works. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give today is the truth to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Thank you. Go ahead. On Sunday, November 4th, 2018, at 1052 AM, while performing a routine inspection, I found a single black trash bag on the sidewalk abutting to a city litter receptacle at the 1600 block of Polk Street. Upon further inspection, I found brown paper bags and other items inside the black trash bag that identify it belongs to Bob Stonet. Bob Stonet addresses at 1621 Polk Street, which is located approximately 100 feet from where the trash bag was dumped. I didn't verify with Recology that Refuge Collection Service for 1621 Polk Street is in the name of Bob Stonet Shop with a 32-gallon trash bin and a 64-gallon recycle bin service on Mondays, a 64-gallon compost bin service seven days a week. As the trash bag was dumped on the sidewalk alongside a city litter receptacle on collection day, 100 feet away from the business and they were open. I issue a citation to Bob's Donut Shop for violating MHC 280. As you, can, as you can see, this was the black trash bag. And then on October 20th, uh, 1045, we found overflowing green bin. And this was sent to 1621. And that's the letter in case they said they don't received it, so. See, that was on October 28th, you said? This was August 20th. August 20th. For the, the overflowing green bin was August 20th? Yes. And, the and then the other one was um, the other one was for November 4th, the first one. Okay. And this is on June 27th. that the letter was sent out to Bob Stonet. And these were our findings at nighttime with more overflowing bins. Okay, thanks. All right, that's it. Uh, I'll go ahead and I'll call the appellant up. Yeah, come on up to the microphone. We'll start by stating your name, and uh, Nathan will swear you in. Uh, yes. My name is Aya Am. I'm the owner of the Bob's Donuts. Hi. Morning. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give today is the truth to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, I have talked to my employee if they put a trash in the city bins and they didn't. And I do have a problem with homeless guy grab out our trash, put it everywhere. I have been cleaning after them often, 
I went to our neighbor's house, the driveways, wherever someone told me, because you can see uh, our address in the brown bag, so say, hey, we see a trash there, the, you know, someone made a mess, and I'm sure they're not gonna be happy about it, so I have been cleaning up as soon as I know, but I can be top of everything. Um, when a homeless guy made a mess, or like I see a guy making all the street mess, I will call the police, but again, I'm running a business, I can be top of everything, and um, yes, that's my, um, my story. <laughs> okay, so so the black bag that that was left on the sidewalk was mm -hmm. was something that was pull, 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 that was on a Sunday, right? Yes. Uh, but so you don't your garbage cans weren't out on the on the Sunday or Saturday, we do, were they? Yeah, we only have the green beans, but sometimes we use the black bag. But we do put it in a green bean always, and we put it inside a bin. But if someone grab it and then take it somewhere else then it's out of control because I can be watching every single minute of it. So, th was, so that was, th that, bl that bag was found on an actual garbage day? Well, I mean the, uh, no? <laughs> Maybe let me call Public Works up and clarify the date of service. It was Sunday, I believe. Sunday, and what day is your, your are your bins serviced by Recology? Or by, uh, yeah, I guess Recology, right? So we have Monday and, uh, let's see, Monday and Friday on a regular trash and then the green, uh, the recycle, and then seven days a week for the green beans. Oh, because, separate, okay, so that's every day. Yeah, because I gotcha. okay. our trash is mostly composable. I can show you the bill, but mostly Yeah, yeah, no, that's all right. So. All right, uh, there's any, any other comments from Public Works on this one? On that Sunday, it's um, the, the garbage bag that I found was not compost. So, and the blue bin was not out. It was during we, uh, picked up. That's why we put it inside, because every time we empty, we have to bring it inside. Actually, you can speak in the other microphone. Okay. They're both, they both work. Sure. Um, so compost bin was every day out. Right, right. Uh, no, I understand that. In, in, because we have to take it out, otherwise we got a notice from a uh, public worker that as soon as it's empty, you need to bring it inside or we'll give you a ticket, which is understandable. Um, so we do that. So we take it out every single day. And uh, we might have made a long bag, because we're not supposed to use a black bag for the composable, but um, every day it's in a trash bin unless someone grab it and takes away. And uh, inside there was, everything was paper, um, milk, um, cotton. It was all composable item inside because we will always make sure it's composable inside, so. Okay, anything else? No, she stated that the uh, green bin is compostable, but the black trash bag is right next to the city can, and there were no green bins or blue bin outside. Right. During my inspection. Un understood. That was 10 something in the morning, which already picked up by city worker. They come morning, so. I, I got you. I got, I got a picture of it. All right, anything else? Um, also, the fine is $1,000. That's really harsh. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I don't deny. The oh, yeah, go ahead and speak into the microphone there. I don't deny the the overflowing part, and I understand the city want to make a you know statement about it. But again, I we didn't put by the city trash on purpose, and it just seems unfair to go down a small business. Oh, for that on that right, right. Well, okay. So it sounds like you know one of, one of the issues is um, is the overflowing bins, which I think maybe you, you might want to coordinate with Public Works about what you can do about that if it, if it does continue to be a problem. But yeah, it sounds like this was a one-time thing where the garbage bag ended up outside of the bin. Mm -hmm. 
very likely by, by homeless. I, I do understand that piece. But obviously, overflowing bins are probably a, a, an easier target than a tightly sealed, maybe even a locked bin if that became necessary. But uh, okay, so and, something anyway, else. Just, just options that I've seen before. So it looks like do we have another, another follow-up? Noted, she stated that it was um, her garbage service and for recycle and compost is on Thursday and Friday. Compost is every day. Comp if compost is every day, the bin should have been out. And, was, and not uh, by the city can where you can find her recycling right by the can. And when I dug into it, that's where I know who it belonged to. Mm -hmm. Because the uh, recycle, um, the pickup time changed a lot on the city. So it used to be uh, really early in the morning. So we used to take out five in the morning. But they sometimes change to midnight. You can check with them, but they have changed. So we take it out middle of the night, and we take it out when they emptied it. So of course, 10 in the morning, the bin is not out there because it's already picked up. Right, no, I, I, I understand, I understand, yeah. yeah. I'm sure you didn't see it, but we always, ever or they take it out of the trash. Because if you don't have a trash pick up the day, you can claim that I put it, but we have a single day of trash. You can check with them. No, I un understood, I understand. That's, uh, if there's, yeah, if there's nothing else, no new, new facts, I'll uh, go ahead and take, yeah, take uh, the facts under consideration and mail out my response. Thank you. Okay, so the next item is uh, citation number 213675116, an appeal for violation of the Municipal Health Code section 280 at 1109 Grant Avenue. And I understand that the appellant no longer wants to appeal this one, so we'll go ahead and read it into the record and, and, uh, and, <laughs> and, and conclude it. No, that's. Oh, are, are you are you here for the? Oh no, I'm the uh, officer. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah and I'm I'm being told we don't you don't actually have to present your yeah, case. You okay. So you're good. Just read the item that we. Yep. All right, so that one's done. Okay, which brings us to citation number 213-62499, an appeal for violation of Municipal Health Code section 280 at 404 Hoffman Avenue. So we'll go, I'll go ahead and start with Public Works. Uh, you, yeah, you can, you can relax for another minute here. Okay, Nancy, you're still under oath. Go ahead and proceed, thank you. On Tuesday, September 25th, 2018, at 9.07 a.m., while performing a routine inspection, I found cardboard boxes on the sidewalk by the curb between the recycling bin and the trash bin, not properly broken down and illegally dumped in front of 1545 Polk Street of a business called Manny Petty Spa. Upon further inspection, I found three mailings on the cardboard box from Amazon, Nordstrom, and J. Crew addressed to Kelly Van Keen and Cameron, sorry if I botched this name, B E N D I M E R A D, and one addressed to Kareen, both at 404 Hoffman Avenue, which is located in Noe Valley, but more than a 20 minute drive away. I then verify with Recology Refuge Collection Service for 404 Hoffman is in the name of Kelly Van Akeen with a 20 gallon black bin, a 32 gallon recycle and compost bin service on Tuesday. As the cardboard boxes were illegally dumped on the sidewalk by the curb in front of 1545 Polk Street, 20 minutes away from the residence, I issue a citation to Kelly Van Akeen and Karen or violating MHC 280. 
As you know, these were the boxes that I found between the blue and black bin not broken down. And these are the labels identifying where it belonged to. Okay, go ahead and approach the microphone and state Hi. your name. I'm Kelly Van Aken. Um, and good morning. I'm, good morning. Hi. Please oh. raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to the testimony you're about to give today is the truth to the best of your knowledge? I do. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, so I am a resident of 404 Hoffman Avenue, along with my husband, Kareem Ben Um and my 16-month-old son, Max Ben which I saw in one of the packages as well. Um, Polk Street is, I actually haven't been to Polk Street in maybe four or five years since I lived in the marina. We've been living in Noe Valley for the past two years. I have no idea how these cardboard boxes got there. I do know that our uh, recycling and garbage is serviced on Tuesday morning, and we put out our bins on Monday night. Um, so it's, it's just as shock to me as anyone how these boxes got all the way over in the Knob Hill, Chinatown area at a Manny Petty spa. <laughs> all right, uh, yeah. Um, I, I do know that there, there are, I mean, I've asked my husband about it. My husband works down in the peninsula. I work down in the financial district. We have, have no reason to be over in that area of town. I mean, do you recognize the boxes where they have been, would they have been placed into your recycling bin on your, your day? Absolutely. Perhaps? Absolutely. I, I brought my recycling bills showing that we have service at our property and we've never had our bins over full or anything like that. Yeah. Um, there really is no reason for our garbage to be all the way out on Polk Street in Knob Hill. All righty. Anything else? By and for anybody? No? Nope. All right. Thank you for coming. I will uh, go ahead and mail out my decision. Thank you. I have an appeal. Barely. You're way away. All right, maybe, uh, maybe you're not hearing me so well from the, you, the mics might not be. Yeah, you just sound very far away. All right, well, let's, let's go ahead and start. I'm going to have Nathan swear you in. Okay. So we, uh, let me start by having you state your name for the record. Okay, my name is Linda Bacioco Simi. Good morning, ma'am. Morning. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give today is the truth to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and read the citation in, and then I'm going to have Public Works present their testimony, mm -hmm. and then I will give you a chance to, uh, you know, to rebut their testimony or present your own testimony. Okay. All right, so it's citation number 213-66685, an appeal for violation of the Municipal Health Code Section 280, and the Municipal Health uh, Code, let's see, actually, I think this is just 280, actually, right? Yes. Uh, and that's at 2406 41st Avenue? No. All right, I have that wrong here. It's 2418 28th Avenue. All right, let me make sure I have the right one. 2418. All right, so what was, what was the address again? 2418 28th Avenue. Okay, there it is. All right, I got it. Thank you. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and have Public Works uh, uh, present their testimony. Okay. On Thursday, October 25th, 2018, at approximately 9.28 a.m., while performing a routine inspection along Terravel Street, 
I found two big cardboard boxes filled with car box alongside utility box at the corner of Terrafell Street and 28th Avenue. Upon further investigation, I found shipping labels on the car box addressed to Parkside Appliance at 2418 28th Avenue. I then confirmed with Recology that the refuse collection service at this address is a combined service account of four units under the name of Dario Basilco with two 64-gallon trash bins, a 64-gallon recycle bin, and a 32-gallon compost bin all surfaced on Wednesday. Therefore, the cardboard boxes should not be out on a long collection day. Since the cardboard boxes were out on the public right of way a very short, short distance from the business at 2418 28th Avenue, I issued a citation to Parkside Appliances for violating Municipal Health Code 280. Okay, I don't dispute any of that. Thank okay, you, actually, uh, she's putting some pictures up, uh, which okay. I don't know if you have the pictures or not, but I'm seeing pictures. No, of, I uh, don't, but I, I was there. So, okay, so, yeah, I see a large... Uh, a couple, boxes a and couple of large cardboard mm -hmm. boxes with yeah, and they were there material. for about a total of 10 minutes because my guy and we have right a cardboard here. man who comes and picks them up okay that's what i'm disputing in other words you just timed it perfectly <laughs> and came by but just before my guy came to pick up the cardboard Okay, any comment from Public Works on, so on, I, on I, that? So I, I don't really understand. So you said that your guy mm -hmm. come and pick up the cardboard boxes. Is that um, you guys have like a separate uh, recycling company to help to yes. um, handle your cardboard boxes? I'm sorry, yes, we do. Uh -huh. uh, but at, in that morning, I actually talked to one of your employees, I think, and he didn't tell me about that. Well, I can't uh, respond to that because I don't know what he was thinking. All I know is he had him, uh, you know, on the other side of the, uh, right where you said he was, when I, just before I told him they should be in front of the shop, not up there. And he told me that because of the parking or whatever, you know, they needed room to come get the boxes. That's why they were up on the corner. But beside the point, they were there for about 15 minutes on the outside. Okay. And is that, you, you the, the, did, did you write the, uh, were, you, were you the one that wrote the citation? Uh, yes, I wrote a citation. I was there, mm -hmm. and I see two really big cardboard boxes with a lot of, um, like... Um, there was a lot of cardboard. Yes, yes. there was. And, and I just want to let you know, so the proper disposal of cardboard boxes, I'm not sure if you know. So, uh, so you should have uh, a garbage company that is licensed by the um, city and county of San Francisco to handle your cardboard boxes? No. And, and He's I, um, a man who comes by uh, when we, when, uh, yeah, no, I, 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 I use the recycling I, guy. Yeah, no, I understand. I, I've, I've heard cases like this before. Um, and, and I tell you what I will do is uh, I'll, I'll probably end up having to uh, do a little more research on this one, talk to the director. Um, okay. But yeah, my, my question the to- The city to, won't, the recology won't pick up our cardboard. Mm -hmm. It's too much. They won't take it. Right. The, uh, Therefore, well, we have, I don't even know who it is. It's a guy who comes by, and he picks up the cardboard on certain days. Right, right. That's what we have to do it, because, like I said, Recology won't pick it up. Yeah, okay. Um, I mean, if, how many wash machine boxes will, <laughs> yeah, you know. right. So we have to uh, do it that way. And yeah, recology would re require you to break them down completely. I yeah, assume. well, we can to a certain point, but then they're still in a. We have to still can't stack them out there. 
there's too many. You know, you're talking 10 or 15 appliance boxes. Right, right. At a time. All right. Uh, any, anything else? So Recology will do it if you increase the surface. I can't hear her. Um, Actually, Recology won't refuse to surface your cardboard boxes, so they will, I think, basically, they will... They'll take cardboard boxes, but they will not take appliance boxes, 10 appliance boxes at a time. And that's about once a week for us. Yes, that's what I'm trying to say. So if you increase your surface, like, because one well now you only have one sixty-four gallon for four units, and um, it's only serviced once a week. So if you have a lot of cardboard boxes, I think maybe it's better that you increase your surface, your recycling surface, so that you can have Recology to pick up your cardboard boxes. Okay, so you're telling me that I have to pay Recology to come pick up the cardboard boxes when I have a guy who comes by and takes them for free? Yeah. Well, actually, let me. I'm going to go ahead and have you coordinate offline with Public Works. Uh, I've, I've gotten enough facts for me to make a decision on this case. Okay. Um, but, but again, moving forward, you might want to go ahead and call and try to coordinate with them about the best way to do this. I, you know, I understand. Uh, We're you're, talking you're, about a matter of ten minutes. Yeah, We're not no, talking I. Talking about a matter of you know leaving them out there for days. Right, right. No, I understand that, and I, you know, I'm glad that it. You know, I'm glad to hear that it was just a very short duration. They were. Yeah, we there, never leave so. the stuff on the streets like that. Yep. I mean, uh, you can come by. I'll come by on you know Wednesdays, and I've got washing machines standing out there waiting for my my recycling guy to come pick them up. He recycles the metal. Right. And so you're going to give me a ticket every time I put out the yeah. washing machines for the recycling guy to pick up? <laughs> well, yeah. That's again. You know? I don't want to get into that detail <laughs> here, but I but I would definitely coordinate these items with with Public Works. Okay. I, all righty. Just tell me how to do it, and we'll get it done. Okay. Actually, can you make sure she has contact information? Uh, yes. Okay. She has, she has our phone number on the citation. Okay. So I guess there's a phone number on the, the, the citation that you can call. Yeah. Talk to Niall. I think his yep. name is. Okay. Yep. All okay. right. Thank you very much. I'll mail out my decision. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay, uh, our next item is, uh, or it started out as citation number 213690066, uh, and it has been reduced to a warning, uh, but it was, an, so it was an appeal for violation of Municipal Health Code Section 280 at 201 Pine Street. And uh, we'll go ahead and start with Public Works. Uh, you can state your name for the record. And um, my name is Enyi Wamwo, uh, Supervisor, uh, Public Works Operations. Morning, Enyi. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to the testimony you're about to give today is the truth to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Thank you. Uh, due to uh, previous conversations with the um, appellant, uh, we have spoken to, uh, we, we had a, some dialogue over this past weekend, and uh, also we have uh, come to a resolution in relation to the actual um, citation itself. Um, it's not actually a warning. It's actually been negated altogether. Oh, okay. Okay. And um, I'll correct that but, for the record. Okay. And the um, the appellant would like to uh, speak his particular case. He wanted to go through with the hearing. Uh, Public Works doesn't have an actual response or a case to present, but he would like to speak upon the issue itself. Okay. Thank you. All right. I'll go ahead and call the uh, appellant up. Okay, go ahead. good morning. Go ahead and state your name for the record. My name is Kamel Bouzidi. Can you speak into the mic, please? Kamel Bouzidi. Okay. Good morning, morning, sir. Please okay. raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to the testimony you're about to give today? Is the truth to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Go ahead. Yes, I, I have an issue in this address. The last five years, my neighbor, he steal my garbage. He threw all his garbage in the street, and each time they came to me, they give me a hard time, and they have all the proofs. 
So uh, it's like the last citation. This gentleman, he went there. I show him all the proof. It's not my garbage. It's not in the same uh, side of the street. So this guy, he do a lot of business. He put his garbage everywhere. He dropped it even in the street at night. And I have a few pictures and video. I want you guys to see this. Tables and chairs, it's illegal. Okay, and actually you can play that video right on the screen there. You can put your phone down and play the video. This for the next one, the next phone one. Yeah, it'll be a few more minutes. That's the 1010 here? 1010? Yeah. Okay. Be a few minutes. Anyways, let, let me, uh, I, I do have another hearing after. Let me, uh, let me go ahead and, uh, you know, you can, I can have you show me the video I anytime, but the, uh, I can just. show you the photo. I yeah. have a lot of photos. Okay, yeah, go ahead and put yes. those up if you got the photos. Whatever you want there, yeah, you can do that. Yeah, if you actually move it around on the screen, you can get the glare out, off of there. Just move it, move it left and right. Maybe there you go. Anyways, that's I see it. Okay. So he has he has actually a, a business run on a you know on the sidewalk there it looks like partially, and that and the complaint I guess is that garbage from that business gets into the street and the, the surrounding neighborhood. All right. Well, uh, sir, you've uh, let me let me just state that you're actually doing everything you can do working with Public Works, and it uh -huh. sounds like that that uh, is is very successful. I'm sorry that you've received citations yourself, uh, but again, I think you're you're hooked up with the right guy here, and uh, he will definitely help. Work, you know, they'll they'll work through a solution to this problem. You know, with you. But this is it's like five years now, and nothing done. So I have to pull up my tables and chairs because they threatened me to take my license. And when you see cross street, his one, he do everything illegal. This guy has protected, I don't oh, know. Oh, I see own. the tables and chairs you were showing me were your, your business. Yes. Uh, I yes. gotcha. Okay. Tables and chairs plus the garbage. This guy, he has, I have like 100 photo of garbage, full of garbage every single day. And they came to me each time they come, give me a hard time, in which is you see the last photo over there. 
you know, the one you give me citation. Mm -hmm. It's not in my side, it's not my restaurant, it's his restaurant. And this is for the last five years. Every week, same thing, same thing, same thing. I want someone to do something. All right. I, unfortunately, I have the authority to preside over just, just what I see on paper in front of me. But to deal with the bigger issue, mm -hmm. you're, you're working with the right guy here. You, that's, 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 uh, you know, that, that, that's your recourse. That's what the city is you know, there to, to help you. And it sounds like you have that help coming now. But I think they did, I'm not talking about him. They didn't do anything for five years. So you've, if we you've, go you've, you've in, complained for five years, yes, and, uh, yes. and are you sure they haven't done anything? I mean, they have not no. cited this, this yeah, person? They cite him twice, but he keep doing it. He has the money. What's $200? That's what I'm saying. We're, we're going through different, like, I don't know what people did previously. Right. You got, you're on it now. A different angle, a different approach. Well, I do need to bring up, you know, I need, do need to talk to the director about another case, so I will. Yeah, I'll point out that you've had this issue, this long-term, right. long issue, you know, long-standing issue, but I'm sure that he'll, you know, the director will appreciate that his staff is, is helping you now. I, uh, what, you know, I can't comment on the past. I don't know. I don't have that history, but you, you're, you're working through the right channels right now. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our next citation is a phone. Okay, are you doing the next one? Yes. Okay. We'll, we'll try to get the, uh, the, the call up. Oh. And he's going to do uh, this one as well. You, you having the person call, we can take care of the preliminaries. Hello. Hello. Hi. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? This is uh, Brian Henderson. I'm the hearing officer for your hearing today. Yes, I hear you. It's a little staticky, but I hear you. Okay. Uh, the way we're going to proceed, I'm going to go ahead and read the citation in, and, uh, and then I'm going to have Public Works present their testimony, and then I'll have you present your testimony. Okay. All righty, mm -hmm. so uh, this is citation number 213-66526, an appeal for violation of the Municipal Police Code section 63A at 1711 Lane Street. Okay. Okay, and we'll start with Public Works. So I need to go ahead and start by stating your name. My name is Enyi Wamu, <clears throat> Public Works Officer. Okay, and uh, when you're ready. Okay. One moment. Okay, on October 24th at 12.57 p.m., I was on an eco blitz of the Bayview neighborhood at, and the surrounding area. During the eco blitz, I discovered a vehicle blocking the public right away at the 1700 block of Lane Street. A previous citation was issued for Municipal Health Code 280. Upon, excuse me, upon checking the record, a previous citation was issued to this address for municipal violation of Municipal Health Code 280, which is legal dumping, and Municipal MPC Code 63A on April 21st, 2018 for illegal dumping that blocked the public right away by the zone supervisor too. This citation was not paid either. Due to this homeowner history of blocking the sidewalk, I issued a citation for violation of municipal um, police code 63A. Okay. And uh, sorry, the photos are
and there is also stains from the vehicles uh, blocking the sidewalk, and it's not accessible. It's violating a lot of ADA uh, access for individuals who are trying to make their way through the area. And that's the vehicle parked in front of the address. As you can see in this corner, this is 1711. Okay. That's the number there. Gotcha. That's it. All right. Uh, for okay, you on the uh, phone? Uh, can you uh, state your name for the record? Abira Hines. Okay, Abira. Nathan's going to swear you in. Good morning, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give today is the truth to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Go ahead. Thank you. Okay, so what, what, I, what, what I was shown, you know, you heard the testimony, what you didn't hear or what you couldn't see was a picture of a car blocking the sidewalk. Okay. Um, do you have any, anything to say about the car blocking the sidewalk? Uh, yes, I do. Um, I do not live in that house, and um, there... Uh, I don't know if there was a car park there. I've never received a citation of any type. Um, this is the first time I heard of it. And due to um, me having Parkinson, I do not travel back and forth up there. And I don't know anything about our public work, but I do take care of keeping the surroundings. Have one, but for his parking, I don't have a car to park up there or what. But I have seen previous cars actually parked in that neighborhood from that street or on. I took a ride up Sunday and I saw cars on car, but it wasn't one there. Now I don't know whose car it is or what, you know, what proceeded. Okay, you say you don't, you don't have a car at all? No, not there. I don't even have a citation. No. That's why I'm asking why I got it. I didn't get no citation. I don't have a, the car. And I don't live at that address. Uh, you don't live at the 1711 Lane no. Street address? No. Uh, how did you receive the citation? I didn't receive none. I, uh, someone sent me um, a mail saying I have an envelope that came that was certified from San Francisco Public Works City and County. And I had um, someone to pick it up for me. And they brought the letter to me and said, Hines, a bureau, 1711 Street, to the My Plaza Court address. I, this is, that's why I called. And to ask about it because I, this is the first time, you know, I heard anything about it when I called and asked why I'm, you know, this amount of money and what's going on. So, so a certified letter was sent to? We sent it to the tenant and the owner. So she's the original owner. Both right, parties. they sent it to owner, but I have never had a citation. Um, I don't even own a car at there or drive. I drive, but... I don't drive because I'm under medicine. So it's a possibility that if she had previous tenants, that previous citation could have been issued to a previous tenant. And I don't even know if they, you know, could have been. I don't know. You know, I doubt it. I don't know. Okay, I don't want to sit and say I know because I've seen cars that park up in, and I know um, I've had when I was doing some work up there. Because there's a store on the corner, I've seen people just park up, or, you know, all on the street. Even yesterday, I've seen a lot of cars just parked up on the sidewalk. Well, not yesterday, Sunday, as I said. Right. It seems seems to me we should probably be ticketing the cars here. Uh, any? Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's any, a any solutions here? <laughs> um, in this particular neighborhood, um, it's a possibility that it could have been a random vehicle. I mean, but at that time when we were doing our uh, our, uh, our inspection of the area, we were doing enforcement heavily on that particular street, mm -hmm. and I was, there is a possibility that the vehicle could not belong to her. But according to what I saw, where it was parked, in relation to the address, um, it was visible clearly visible to me but it is a possibility the vehicle doesn't okay. belong to her 
Um, I'm just thinking for these kind of, of issues, maybe uh, bring, you know, call out uh, DPT. M M yeah, MTA yeah. Uh, to yeah. have them cite it, cite the vehicle itself. Because primarily was the uh, oil from the vehicle, the stains on yeah, the Yeah, so clearly board. somebody's been parking there yeah, on a regular it, basis, which is likely a tenant. But again, it's, uh, I'd have a hard time. Yeah, you know, if the, well, anyways. Yeah, as you say, it could even have been some random car that didn't belong to anybody associated with the house. And okay, uh, all right. Thank you, uh, thank you for calling in. I'll go ahead and take the facts under consideration and mail out my uh, decision. Okay. All right. Thank okay. You. How long before I know? Uh, it'll be a couple weeks. Okay. All right. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. That, those ones are tough. I'm, I know. Yeah, I think we're going to have to do that. No I'm appellant, though. I'm going to go ahead and read the citation in. I'll have Public Works present their case, and then I'll call you, you guys up to present your testimony. Okay, so uh, let's see. We're going to do citation uh, 213-66414, an appeal for violation of the Municipal Health Code, Section 283 at 163 2nd Street. Okay. Okay. Uh Yep, go ahead. All right. Uh, on October 23rd, 2018, at 626 p.m., my public information officer, Gregory Townsend, uh, not present, was on inspection for Mar on Market Street, inspection of Market Street, and discovered overflowing bins <clears throat> belonging to 163 Second Street. The business and property owner has been issued numerous warnings about cardboard boxes and overflowing bins on 729th. 2016, 1031, 2017, and 9 2018. Due to this previous history of overflowing bin, the, P the public information officer issued a citation for violation of Municipal Health Code 283. This is the photo from 1023. And as you can see, this is the address. These are the bins. And this is the blue address um, that's clamshelling up us for the blue bin. One six three second, right here, and right there. And we have a moment. This is from 529, excuse me, uh, May 29, Notice of violation from February 4th, 2017. date for this one is, uh, I have it as November 1st, excuse me, make this uh, October 30, 2017. This is the photos from the notices of violation. Thank you. 
Go ahead and come on up. Yeah, yeah, come on up to the microphone. Okay, let me have, uh, you can go to each microphone, they both work. Hi, so uh, we're the owners of Native Company at 163 2nd Street. Let, let me have you state your name. Oh, so. my name is Nicole Fish. Caitlin Mead. Good morning. Good morning. Would you guys mind uh, raising your right hands, please? Do you solemnly swear that the testimonies you're about to give today are the truth to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, so we actually took over this location from Tava Kitchen and have been open and operating there since November of 2017. So all of the violations prior to that, as you can tell in the photos where the, um, the name of the restaurant is listed as Tava Kitchen, was from a previous um, establishment that's, yeah, it was not our business. Um, and we have, I need, to, I need to like look back and see exactly when this happened, but the San Francisco Public Works has required us to have locks on our bins for a, for a pretty long time. I wanna say starting in May of 2018, we were required to have locks on our bins. And then also, we share that building with a number of offices um, on the, the, the floors above us. And so Recology has um, the bins for 163 2nd Street, the offices say 163 2nd Street on them, and our bins say Native Company written in that white pen on them. So they, you can differentiate between the two of them. Um, that being said, if you've been around that area, there's a pretty big homelessness and garbage issue. Um, just this morning, Recology failed to pick up our green bin, which means that they may or may not come pick up our bin today. If not, we're normally instructed to just leave the trash on the side of the bin, and this happens to us fairly regularly, where either Recology will forget to pick something up or a bin will be stolen. In the case that a bin is stolen, Recology doesn't get us a new bin for four to five business days. That entire time, we're instructed to just leave our trash on the street to the side of the bin, um, which is frustrating for you guys, I'm sure. It's also quite frustrating for us. It's, um, you know, visibly not like the most attractive thing, and it means that our curbs get quite dirty. But yeah, in response to those, to those photos, I, I don't believe that those bins that say 163 2nd Street belong to us, because ours do say native, and they should have locks on them. Um, and all the, all the violations prior to November of 2017, yeah, would not pertain to us. All right, so yeah, well clearly, uh, why don't we put the pictures back up, but uh, were those locking bins? Uh, they, I, I mean, they weren't locked, I know that, that was yeah, yeah. clear, but I mean, did they have the locking hasps on them? The latest picture, the one from uh, so from October twenty third. There, said October twenty third. They, they just do you have a picture of the latest bin? The latest. Uh, Give me one. The, uh, yeah, the one from this year. Yeah, so I saw May uh, two thousand sixteen, February, October two thousand seventeen. Yeah, Those kitchen. were all before the they took over now? the business. Uh, it's the legal name is Colina Inc., but we're doing business as Native Company. Native Company, thank you. So make sure I bring out the right ones. So. This is in relation to the notice of violation on So your so your bins actually have some other writing besides that 163 second we see there. Yeah. They, yeah. They, yeah. They distinguish it by saying Native Co. instead of. Co. Yeah. So this is. Um, and when did you say you started business? Because these are from October. 
2013. Of 2013. Well, they started with 2013, 2000. Yeah, yeah. Now they started business in 2017, November 2017. 2017. But but those bins you just showed, they're saying they're not their bins because theirs have number one, they have locks and they actually have okay. other writing on them. Okay, so <clears throat> these ones from October 23rd, 2018. Uh, so this says native. Mm -hmm. uh, this one doesn't, and the blue does not. So just the green one technically is overflowing a bit, but not too much. It's not a, um, an egregious uh, showing of it, but these two belong to the actual neighbors, if that's what they're stating according to what they're stating about what's written on there. Okay, but the, but the native one is yours? The green one. Yeah. Yeah. And is that- I don't is know it? why it's not locked, to be honest. Um, and it does look like it has the, the little n notch for where you would be able to lock it. Okay, but the other ones don't, so, okay. Uh, no, the blue does, the black does not. There's a little s s slit right here. Yeah, okay. And do all, are all your bins locking? Yeah, we pay a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, no, the locking service costs. All right, uh, so maybe we need to investigate the neighbor, I guess. Yeah. All righty. Anything else anybody has to add on this one? No. I'm, okay. okay, guys, thanks for coming in. I'll take the uh, facts under consideration, mail out my decision. Okay, our next citation is number 213-70529, an appeal for violation of Municipal Health Code Section 280 and Municipal Police Code Section 34 at 719 Green Street. And I'm reading for uh, Supervisor, Zone Supervisor Mario Montoya, Jr. Uh, um, so, so let me, uh, what I'll do is I'll have Public Works present the te their testimony and then I'll call you up. All right, Zone A Supervisor Mario Montoya Jr. who runs the uh, GA crew was performing an inspection of District 3 on Thursday, November 15, 2018 at 7.55 a.m. He arrived on the 1300 block of Powell Street and saw items left on the sidewalk. Zone A Supervisor Mario Montoya Jr. and GA crew discovered the items he saw was an illegal dumping of trash on the sidewalk. Upon further investigation, the illegal dumping was in front of 1362 Powell Street and found mailings identifying it belonging to Felicia Aaron Tissenbaum and Charlene Tissenbaum. With the items having relevant contact information from the individuals, I issued a, cit a citation for Municipal Health Code 280 and municipal MPC code 34 for the accumulation of litter on a sidewalk. Uh, one moment. Okay, so I see we're, what is the 719 Green Street? Is that where the, the material was found on Powell? That's correct. And, and, uh, so and the address you. is actually on Green? So the, let me zoom in. So Felicia Tissenbaum. Oh, okay. There's the Green Street. Seven one nine Green. Um, this is the address stated where the items were found. And what's that address? Um, that would be thirteen sixty two, um, thirteen sixty two Powell. And how far is that from seven nineteen Green? Give me a moment, let me think. Okay, if, yeah, yeah. if you're not sure. That, 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 I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, if that, you're not sure, I, we can, yeah, I can look that up. That's all right. This is the pile that was left there. Okay. In front of the business and the items that were found. And although the, uh, the name, the address is distant 531 Lucius Mall, Stanford, California, 
um, this was the relevant address that was used to uh, cite. Okay. But the names are the same. All right. Anything else? Is that That's it? it. Call you up. Okay, if you can state your name to start with. Good morning, my name is George Kuhn. Okay, George. Good morning, sir. Please morning. raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give today is the truth to the best of your knowledge? Yes, I do. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay, what do you got? <laughs> well, I'm a representative to the uh, homeowner. Um, Felicia is the tenant, and I did talk to her about it. Um, it if you look at the picture, it's stated the address. It's, this is a residence. There is a trash bin. Why should she throw away her garbage in front of somebody else's property? There's no reason. And you, you do live in the city, you should know there's people picking up, you know, other people's garbage from... Go ahead and put, is that, is that a different picture? You can put that on the overhead projector there. Uh, it's the same picture as what you got. Oh, okay, okay. It's exactly the same. All right. Um, and uh, do, do you know the answer to my question from before? It's how far the two addresses are I apart? don't know. They didn't state the address in here oh, at okay. all. Okay, okay. I did go to the public work also, try to find out uh, where was the address. I don't know. They didn't know. Um, uh, well, the address, I think the, the address where the garbage was found was at 1362 Powell Street. Right. Right. Okay. That, but as... Yeah, yeah, and you're, say, and you're you're saying that I that, mean, that, a, that garbage, yeah, that garbage found their the way. You're, you're saying you're, right. you're, I guess what what I'm being led to believe here is that it was properly disposed of, removed from that can, and dumped in this mm -hmm. other location mm -hmm. by some unknown entity. Right. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's a that's a tough one. Any anything else, Dad? I think we, we have some more information here coming. Uh, so according to um, Google Maps, it's two blocks away. 719 Green is two blocks away from 1362 okay. Powell. All right. So it's a two-minute drive, two, four-minute walk. Uh, two blocks away is, yeah, yeah, that's good enough. Yeah, and it wasn't a lot of garbage. It wasn't going to fill up a can, mm -hmm. right? So, all right. All right, if there's nothing else, thank you for coming in. Thank you for explaining the right. situation. I'm just wondering, the, because they sent me two citations for the same, same citation number. For okay. Once for the owner, once for the tenant. All right, anyways, all right. I'll, uh, it'll, it'll be resolved when, when I mail out my uh, decision. Right. Thank you. Okay, uh, that brings us up to our 1040. We don't have an appellant, it looks like. Uh, yeah, we'll tell you what, we'll give them till, you know, hopefully somebody shows up by 1050, otherwise we'll read it in and call it done.
another minute. Okay, let's go ahead and read this one in. Uh, citation uh, 213-67881, an appeal for violation of the Municipal Health Code, Section 280, and Municipal Police Code, Section 35A at 198 uh, Broad Street. Uh, go ahead and have Public Works read it in. On Thursday, November 1st, at a po um, to that, to 2018, at approximately 10.47 a.m., while performing a routine inspection along Fort Street, I found a pile of cardboard boxes out on the sidewalk alongside a city receptacles in front of 198 Board Street. Upon further investigation, I found the boxes were used to contain grocery items that were sold in the market at 198 Board Street. I then confirmed with Recology the refuse collection service amount account at this address is in the name of 3J Family Market Inn. With 32 gallon trash and compost bins and a 96 gallon recycle bin on surface on Tuesday. I also verified with Recology there's no special pickup scheduled at this address. Previously on Saturday. One, one second, let me, let me, are you, are you here for uh, uh, 198 Broad Street? Yeah. Yep, okay, we're reading in your, your citation now, so go ahead and wait up here and we'll, you can listen in to the, the complaint and then we'll, I'll call you up to talk about it. Previously on Saturday, February 18, 2017, I issued a notice of violation to 3J Family Market Inn for violating Municipal Health Code 280 and Municipal Police Code 35A after finding a pile of copper boxes out on sidewalk alongside a city receptacle in front of the property. Most recently, on October 23, 2018, I issued a second notice of violation to 3J Family Inn for violating Municipal Health Code 283 after finding a large pile of cardboard boxes out on sidewalk alongside a city receptacle in front of the property. Since the cardboard boxes were out on the public right of way alongside a city receptacle with Doubt a scheduled pickup by a licensed garbage co collection company, I issued a citation to 3J Family Inc. for violating Municipal Health Code 280 and Municipal Police Code 35A. Um, here are some photo I took on November um, 1st. So um, you see um, all the cardboard boxes were used to, to uh, contain grocery items. And here is a um, oops, wider shot showing that uh, the market is actually um, I mean, the city can is actually abutting um, the um, market.
And here's a one photo. I took on um, 2017. So here you see some um, uh, plastic gray. Um, alongside city cans uh, in front of the market. Okay, go ahead and have you come on up. I mean, start by stating your name Morning, for the record sir. there. Sorry, the first time I'll be here in the court. My yeah. language is a little bit limited, not very well. Okay, no yeah. worries. I'm not um, here to... Please uh, state your name, sir. Uh, my name is Sinisa Deraja. Uh, please raise your right hand. Right hand, okay. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give today is the truth to the best of your knowledge? I swear. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Go ahead. Yeah. Speak into the mic, okay? Okay. In the mic? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, go ahead and explain. Uh, you saw the pictures. The, uh, yeah. The, this, you know. I'm not here, sir, to fight with her because she's doing her job. She tried to feel, uh, to left San Francisco uh, clean. That's okay. But I'm here just because I have three problems in this store. The first one, we bought this. I'm not the owner. I'm just a worker. And the owner always give it to me responsibility to make everything clean. Because if we got any citation, it's my problem, not his problem. Because I'm working there. The first thing, we have problem with the, the garbage company. The, I call them more than, I have problem every Tuesday. Like yesterday, I put the garbage outside. And today, if you go now, right now, I can Take your picture after 5 p.m. The garbage not it doesn't uh, the driver doesn't show up every Tuesday. I call the driver the company maybe more than 100 times. I talk with the supervisor more than 40 times. I try to figure out this problem many times, but nothing happened. The second problem, sir, we have a container there, public container garbage. That's. The people think it's public. Everybody bring his uh, garbage and put it there. I bring some picture. I bring uh, some video to show up, to show, uh, to show you, sir, everything. Some people bring, you see the boxes? This my store, OK. But I can't put the boxes like this, because I know I get citation. And the lady, she sent us warning, uh, like, in the end of November. I go in the worker public. I met there the guy, his name Nazir, or Nahir, or I don't know. I didn't remember exactly. I talked to him. I said to him, please, sir, we have problem there. He gave me the number of lady, his name, uh, her name, Alison. And he gave me a phone number. I talked to her many times. I left voicemail. I do my best, but no answer. I try to let her know I need to move this garbage, public container, from the front in the store. Because everybody come, put the garbage, and left. I'm fighting more than 100 times with the people. Please, sir, please, sir, hey, this uh, public garbage, not yours. And do not put in the side the garbage, put behind. We bought this store in uh, 6 June. Everything there is like garbage inside the store. We try to clean. If you see here in the picture, the fridge outside, this I bring the picture, sir, because we clean inside. We put a new floor. We bring a new fridge. So, so this is a new, a new business? Yeah. Since what, June? Yeah, 6 June. Of this year? Yeah. OK, so the pictures from Public Works, the, the older pictures, they weren't, they weren't, you're, you, weren't, you weren't there then. That, that's, Another, uh, there was the picture, another. this picture in uh, six, uh, 
in end of November. So the history is what I'm, I'm just getting at. It sounds like it sounds like we have another situation with a, a new tenant. No, he's, I'm not he's, on he's a worker. The property, he's you know, yeah. the property owner put it on him to keep the place clean. Sorry, after the lady, she took this picture. And 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 actually, uh, who did they who did they say to talk to? Sorry, who, what was the name they gave you to talk to? It's uh, Nazi in the public work to, uh, worker. Nahiz or Nazi. And he gave me his phone number, and he gave me the number of the lady, his name, uh, her name, Alison. Alison, do, is that somebody on your side? So Alison is a special project. Okay. Uh, oh, is that, we, we, were you, that is one of yours, okay. Um, and are we, we trying to move the can, or, I mean, you know, Oh, I want it. Okay. And you okay. can't see this picture if you can, sir, please. I can show you the picture to see what I'm suffering. I have daily inside, and every time I clean, I hire one guy just to clean. I give it to him every day, 30 bucks to clean, but still the same. I do my best. I show you a picture. I find, you see the boxes? I find more than 70 boxes. And all its liquor stored. Everybody thinks it's mine because it's liquor and wine and beer. Oh, so you're saying that those, those boxes are, aren't even your boxes? Yeah, if you came, sir, there, you think that's mine, because it's liquor and beer and some boxes, it's bring them from Delhi oh. City. I was actually impressed with the, how well they were packaged, and I figured we probably yeah, have another, that's, uh, I what I'm going to call picture, the mosquito the video, fleet sir. issue here, but it sounds like that's not even the, at, 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 at the case. One time I smoke outside, and the, uh, the, it's raining, I saw the guys, I took a video from him, and I tried to find him, but he left fast. He put the boxes like this. The boxes, he put it there, and he left. I show you the video right now, sir. I, I, I don't know where I can put this video or. You don't, you don't have a laptop by any chance. Uh, do we have a laptop? Yeah, I put it in my phone here. And you know, I, if you can put it in your phone, you could show it right on the overhead projector, I, actually. I don't have a... Oh, 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 <laughs> no, yeah, okay. That's why. <laughs> but, yeah, see if we can get the laptop uh, up on the screen. You see the guy? He put the boxes fast and he left in the corner. I'm suddenly there. This is a video of the boxes to show you it's the same mine. Were there addresses on any of the boxes? I'm addressing this to Public Works now. You see the container there? Because yep. the garbage uh, guy, he didn't show up. All right, well, it sounds like we have some issues with this address. Uh, any, any further comments? Okay. Uh, yeah, go, go ahead. No, I, I I got the picture. I I mean oh, you're no, you're okay, yeah you're you're sorry man. Yeah, these you're say you're stating that these are not your this is not your your uh, garbage or yeah. boxes. You saw there. You see there one uh, car, the car of the owner. He took many boxes there. Did you see the picture? Uh -huh. He puts these picture all these boxes for just to clean. And he, after she came, she think uh, um it's clean, but it's dirty. I just clean it. So you're, keep, you're keeping this area clean? Yeah, I keep this area clean. I now I go to the round to the store, till the other round, okay. to the other corner to clean. That's good for us, because we have daily... We Absolutely, have you want to keep... Oh, and I thank you for that. All right, I, anyway, Public Works has a comment here. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> So I actually just uh, called Ecology this morning, and and their um, the account holder. So I, I I don't really realize that there's like a change of ownership because the garbage service account name is like the same. 
during mm. the whole time. And the market, uh, um, the, the, the sign, it stayed the same. I don't okay. uh, realize. Okay, all right. Well, anyways. And, his another, another thing. Uh -huh. So I confirmed with them that they never received a phone call from the appellant to saying that they missed uh, picking up their stuff. So hmm. on October 30th, on October 31st, uh, October 30th is Tuesday. So Tuesday is their pickup day. So there's no phone call saying that there's missing pickup. And on October 31st, there's no. And on November 1st, which is uh, the day I issued the citation, is a Thursday. And uh, they do say that they have a call on November 6th, but it's uh, after the uh, citation. And I, 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 yeah, that corner is clean, but um, the cardboard boxes is not my. It's not the first time I see cardboard boxes over there, so um, yeah. So and 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 for the uh, city cam removal, I really don't know because it's different program. Uh -huh. But uh, for the photo, they um, the appellant shows is mostly garbages, not cardboard boxes. Uh, what the, what, he, what the one video would look like they were setting boxes down there, which... Yeah, yeah. But I, I'm wondering how, so you just stick out, or when did you close the market? So your, your business hour, the market's business now, hour? It's so, 9 to 12. Go ahead and Did state it into the microphone, that'd be good. The guy is behind me. I didn't see him. The guy, I talked to him before the first uh, warning. Okay. Yeah. I explained to him what I'm suffering there about this container garbage. And the boxes, I have boxes in my store. I didn't say I don't have it. But I pick the, all the boxes together inside the warehouse. And we have guy, his name Thierry. He came every Friday and uh, uh, Wednesday to pick up because he have van. And he make recycling to boxes, and he pick up all these boxes. I give it to him, but, but the boxes outside is not mine, sir. Yeah, you don't put, you don't put the boxes that he no. picks up if outside. My, he he comes in to pick them up. The the, the, the guy he came in the night. He came at. So you do, you do so you do have to put them out then for him to pick them up. Yeah, he take directly to the, from the warehouse to his. Uh, oh, he does. Oh, they're in the warehouse. They're not on the sidewalk. No, no inside. Okay. No outside. Okay. All righty, anything else? Yes, I took it on um, October 23rd, 2018. So you can see uh, actually the beans uh, is, was overflowing. And there's also a uh, couple boxes alongside the city can. So I'm yeah, just just supplemental like. Um, okay, but well, yeah, I see. We we have a history, and I you know I'm glad you know. There there are some some issues. If your bins are overflowing when you put them out, that's a problem. Uh, but what we're here to you know what we're you know what we're hearing today is actually about the cardboard boxes that were left next to the city can. Correct. That's actually the the yeah what the uh, the violation that we're listening to is, but. Uh, coordinate, you know, as you have these issues, I'm going to recommend that you, you know, take the, take the numbers. You have some numbers for public works folks. Continue to work with them uh, to, to help resolve the issues. All right, I'll mail out my decision. Thank you very much. Uh, this concludes our hearings for the day. Thank you, guys.